Hi, hi, hi. hi. How are you, Pat? Hi, Richard. Hi, Robert. Hi, Stacy. Bye, ladies. Hi. <laughs> Everybody's heading out. We have had a really good but very busy day today. So um, thank you for joining us and, and being on time when we start uh, starting. Gee, let's check in and just hear um, some updates before I go through the new material and bring us uh, bring us forward. Um, anybody want to go first that's on the phone? Pat, do you want to start with your, oh, is that Richard's boy? What the? Pat, I thought maybe we could bring everybody forward with uh, some of the book titles we've been discussing over the week. Sure. Okay. Um, oh, and let me just say, um, if you happen to be catch KTLA Monday morning at 10.45 a.m., I think uh, we got our psychiatrist, Dr. Gaiani De Silva, is going to be on for her book. Uh, awesome. Yeah, so we're really uh, excited about that. And uh, uh, Pat, I'm just pulling up some of the titles that we talked about. Um, sure. And I think I actually, what I, I love about the alchemy of the group together is we, we start, you know, it starts, it pulls, it pulls where we're stuck apart, and then we kind of like let room come in. So. Um, I keep going around the career suicide, and I think uh, Pat keeps playing off the uh, addiction uh, uh, reinvention um, pieces. So cut out. Of, I cut out. Okay. So I, for me, I for, for Pat's titles. I'm talking about uh, Pat Patterson's titles. I keep kind of going around this career suicide idea, and Pat keeps playing around with the idea of. Um, addiction, uh, recovery around the career. So what we did was like kill yourself before you kill your career or um, committing career suicide on purpose to have a joyous creative life on purpose, a turn or slow corporate death into a purposeful new creative reincarnation. Um, I think uh, we threw out the words career intervention, career rehab, or firing yourself. Then we played with commit purposeful career suicide, reincarnate to the crea creative life you were meant to live, or jump off the cre career ladder, free fall into a better way of making a living, or jump off a career ladder, reincarnate to the creative life you were meant to live. So we were playing again, career rehab, career intervention, saving your dead end career, firing yourself, jumping off the career ladder. I still like that reincarnation before you die. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts? What did, you, did you? What did you come up with this week, Pat? Anything ring a bell that you like? The one, the one she's reading, and, and and we actually the the first one was kill yourself before you kill yourself. Oh, I like it. God, I, God, I didn't say that quite the right yeah. way, but yeah. Yeah. Got it. It's like kill yourself before you kill yourself. Got it. Uh, I, it's like it's like there's the title and then the subtitle. The subtitle seems to be around like creating a joyous creative life with purpose or a joyous uh, creative career with purpose. Any other thoughts? We can come back to this. Um, any other thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, part of what I was kind of, I mean, I love the fact that you guys helped me go from, you know, uh, butterflies to, uh, you know, fighter pilots. Because <laughs> 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 I know that's what sells these days. Um, you know, so I think that, you know, your recommendation, Jackie, to kind of, it's probably a combination of these keywords, just in terms of, you know, I, love, I do. I do like the reincarnation part. Part of what I, you know, got so much feedback on when I was working with the literary agent was uh, not to be too cute. That you know, there really should be an explanation of what this is about in the title. So that's, you know, that's a little bit of what I've been trying to achieve. But I do like the I do like the idea of. Uh, you know, su suicide to be born again, kind of a thing. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I, but I think we, I think I think we've got 
I think we have the ingredients. I don't know which is actually going to stick, but I think we yeah. have I think we have the combination of the ingredients, and we'll just keep playing with a uh, scrabble with the words um, until we, you know, land on the tightest the tightest title. Somebody just handed me this book. Hold on, I'm just going to reach for it. Uh, the reason I, pull, I pulled it up for was for um, actually for you, Pat, here. So it's yeah. called The Breakthrough in Two Acts, Breaking the Spells of Painful Emotions and Finding the Calm in the Present Moment. Oh, okay. I think it's too wordy. I <laughs> actually just yeah. think, I think it's too wordy. The Breakthrough in Two Acts. Yeah, I, I just think it's too wordy. But anyway, I just, I... Great. Yeah, yeah so I'm looking at all of them. Tighter, they're, they're, they're all, and and naturally, and I'm sure, you know, my the, the other participants are doing this too. You know, once once I've kind of looked at this category over the last two three years, you see a lot of people. I, I become aware of a lot of people. I don't know that there are a lot more people, but I become aware of them, and uh, you know, some some of them are very simple, like I said last time. Second Act Career has been very successful. One is the Boomer Reinvention. So, you, you know, that's a little bit of the conundrum. Is, is It's a self-help book, so that, you know, self-help books tend to be lose weight fast, you know. Right. Um, and, and not, you know, find your inner soul with a thinner you or whatever. So, no, a lot of those books have like seven steps to do this. They like the steps. Like there's four steps to right. doing this. Yeah, I, and, and my book is kind of has some of that element to it. They're, they they are a, a A B C D E kind of kind of a program. So you, you're saying maybe include that in the title, something along those lines. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. In the, in the subtitle. Like purposeful career suicide to be reborn again to your creative life or something like that. Or right. Seven steps to being seven steps to being reborn to your creative life. Yeah, I, and I hadn't really focused on the fact, you know, I mean, it's it's really interesting that, you know, you, you'd all see the fact that that getting out of your existing life and job would be would be almost the bigger deal as opposed you know as opposed to getting into this new thing so that that's 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 really a, kind of a paradigm shift for me but it makes total sense you know because that is that is what is being offered here is you know putting something down to pick something else up right right and I think well where I relate to it from having read the book is that Sometimes you can't get to where you want until you, yeah, until you, until you drop what you're at. And most people don't know how to right. do that. Or di it's like dismantle before you reassemble. Right. Yeah, and I think that's kind of what you take them through. So we'll keep playing with it. And, uh, oh, you know, yeah, if any of the group has some, some really good ideas. Um, and uh, for Robert, just, you know, uh, keying in on Robert. How about, how about, how about, okay. how about job aside? Uh, you could also sound like herbicide, infant side, homicide. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kill your boss and be free. Say <laughs> that again. What was that? Kill your boss and be free. There we go. This is a whole turning into a whole different kind of Breaking Bad kind of deal. Yeah, we know. Uh, we do know an animator who actually makes a fortune doing a cartoon series on a uh, app and a website called Whack Your Boss. So, oh, so yeah. So, uh, Richard, your instincts aren't like totally off on that one. So, uh, so thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and uh, looks like uh, Robert. Can I can I share that with the with the group? Your good news. Absolutely, sure. Yes. So uh, Robert's uh, book, um, Safe Stardom, is going to be featured in the Teen Choice Award gift bags for this summer, oh, 2017. Cool. So they're going out to 100, 100 top teenage talent 
celebrities manager and managers and press. So we're going to use right. it, and then we'll be able to use the uh, press and publicity uh, for the relaunch of the book in November. So that's a big, big deal for 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 Robert. So yeah, isn't that great? Right. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And how is it? How are you? How are you moving along with your edit? Good, just little by little. It's just, uh, it's not that hard, really. You just have to spend the time. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Ten minutes a day. Uh, Richard, how's your ten minutes a day going? Uh, not too well the last few days, and I have no excuse because I got up at 6.30 this morning. Okay. It's been very, very busy. Okay. Well, Stacy said... Uh, but I, did, you know, I, I, I must say that I did... Um, I did remember a story from when I was a kid about this guy, Scott, who saved my life twice, once when I was eight years old and once when I was 16, and I did not see him between eight and 16. Oh, so he saved your life twice? Twice. Once when I was on fire out, out in the woods, and I didn't really know to, to tuck and roll in the dirt. I was running for this lake about 100 yards away or 50 yards away. And all of a sudden, somebody tackled me. You know, it's like 6 in the morning uh, on fire. You know, I was on fire. And then when I was 16, I was at a rock concert. I was in Levi's and Boots and fell like 40 feet into the ocean. Um, you know, there's a rail and all that. It just gave, gave, gave way. And this, all of a sudden, somebody pulled me from behind, and it was him. I hadn't seen him in eight years. Wow. Yeah, wow is right. Angel. Wow, that's that's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, it's just basically about how, you know, we all have people that uh, are there to help us, you know, if we... Well, good stories for the book, that's for sure. Yeah, that's really good stuff. It's a lot longer than I just told you, but, yeah, it's, it's interesting. So, anyway, okay. I was thinking about that, and I wrote down some stuff about that, but I did. I certainly did not do 10 minutes a day. Well, that's what I find about this whole process, though, is like once you in, engage it or re-engage it or commit to it or mastermind it, is that the, the information starts coming in. You know, like you can't, you can't really escape the process because it starts coming into you. And that's what I had said a couple weeks ago where I would like wake up and I'd have all these sticky notes on my bed board because I'd start to remember these stories that I would have to then write out to add to um, to the book. So, um, so mm -hmm. it sounds like you're right on with the with the inspiration of it. So Stacy here um, sent in her notes. She said, um, she, "Oh, she was doing working on here her news segues. Um, 2017, 25 years uh, anniversary of A League of Their Own, which was one of her favorite movies she grew up on." Um, she said also regarding 2017 um, news topics, uh, Jessica Mendez, Menendez, Mendoza is the first female analyst for Major League Baseball for ESPN for Sunday Night Baseball Games, trailblazing for women and what they are doing. And then she said this week, John McElroy said in an interview that Serena Williams should place at 700 among male competitors. Why is this a question? She is in, in the men's, but she is amazing. There's no right answer for him to give. Can't deny that women are different, but can't really say where she should be placed. Takes away from a woman's accomplishment. There's the fascination of women's men's sports against the women's sports. And this doesn't serve anybody. And in 2016, Monica Abbott signed a record deal for softball with a six-year, $1 million deal. The struggle for women to play in a league and make a living wage. Her salary per year still hits only $20,000 per year. Um, the rest comes in bonuses. And then her, she did her uh, bio. Uh, which is Southern California is the home for the California native since birth, graduating from San Diego State University with a degree in business administration finance. Stacy was able to lock in a loan management position at Wells Fargo in Carlsbad. She stayed there for eight years before shifting careers at, as a service manager at Lincoln Property Company at their Lincoln Military Housing at Camp Pendleton location. And Stacy oversees the monthly move in and move out to the military family. As a competitive athlete herself, Stacey plays co-ed softball on her weekends with her husband, who is an active Marine at Camp Pendleton. They have three daughters who also love to play sports. 
they are a family that loves to travel, swim, and play. So that's her, that's her bio for this week. And she says that she so loves um, listening to everybody's contributions on the call, even though she is in her, her day job during the call. So there we go. So this week, moving on to the uh, presentation part of it, um, we, so our structure for today's call, as I just wanted to recap what we were going to do, go into the review, which we just did, for what everybody's working on, I think everybody's percolating with it, um, and um, I pulled up a piece of research that was uh, more relevant to Stacey and I that we talked about regarding millennials. Um, and actually, it might be also uh, important for Robert with your book is we pulled up this piece of research that the RAF did up, up basically about millennials because everybody's really focusing on this, this generation and where, because so, the they seem to be so different, mostly in their shopping, spending, and lifestyle patterns. They, they don't want cars. They don't want houses. They don't want lawns. Um, and... Uh, and that's just relevant, obviously, because you're positioning, Stacy's positioning towards this, you know, parenting group, and uh, and then Robert, you're peripherally dealing with it, so we just brought that up. That's a conversation Stacy and I had had offline. Um, TV Guestbert Publishing, another vehicle to champion the message of our Guestberts to mass audiences. I think here we are uh, talking a little bit about more about the marketing, uh, some of the challenges the uh, print world uh, faces. Uh, print on demand. So there's a couple. Uh, yes, this print on demand is what publishing is facing. Ebooks, which are Kindles and Nooks. I think I've already mentioned that when we publish an ebook without the printed book, we have a much uh, harder time selling the uh, Kindles or the Nooks. If we have a printed book, we sell the Kindle and it's Kindles and the Nooks really well. Um, and we went through that with Darren Campo. Uh, there's also a separation between. Um, we're having a, there we go, a separation between promotion and uh, publishing, uh, which we, I think anybody who's either been a published author has experienced that, uh, that division, and, um, and also authors make no um, revenue, which is the other issue that people complained about with publishing. And then I think as well as the consolidation industry, we've kind of hit on these in the past couple of weeks, but I think that the overall issue is getting your book out there and having the voice of your book, um, your know, voice of your book heard. So our solution, of course, is to combine very strong public relations and marketing and strong publishing and distribution and doing it at the same time. And, you know, I think where we are at TV Guestbert is that we um, offer and I, and I don't want to say it's like about the money because we offer enough um, low-hanging fruit offerings to make it possible for every, you know anyone to participate. At the same time, um, this is going to drive me nuts. At the same time, um, um, you know, it's bringing for me. It's a, it, or it's just made. It's bad. It's a matter of timeline. You know. It's, we, we truncate a lot of money, we use a shorter timeline, or we just go slower in the timeline, but it's all very possible, and I'm, I'm happy to share what we've learned and what we're doing, but I really feel good about what we've just seen in the course of our workshop with Dr. Gaiani De Silva, because so Monday she does KTLA Live, then we're sending the, uh, the tape over to the Today Show, who's waiting to do a back-to-school segment on it, and by the end of next week she'll be in Portland, Oregon at New Renaissance Bookstore, which is one of our big bookstore placements uh, in Portland, and then she'll be doing four te uh, television appearances that day, two that will air live and two that they're uh, post-taping for a later date. So just staying in the in that place, um, because she's doing a parenting book, we're also doing the grandparenting book, so Pat, she's doing, um, Guyani's going to be doing, it looks like she's going to have an article in the next avenue about grandparents. Um, dealing with grandchildren who are depressed and tweens, and how do you manage, you know, your adult children and your grandparents without interfering is kind of the angle she's taking. And then she's also getting some of her blogs, and she's doing some writing where it's ending up in she savvy. So we're kind of hitting it in all different areas, and this is really what we look to do with, with the book placements. It is so much easier as a company when we have a client who has a upcoming book or a recently published book to place them. There's just hands down rather than uh, clients that 
you know, that were just working on a um, marketing campaign, which is much easier with the book. It's, the media is just so much more uh, receptive to a book. So um, that is the advantage to it. And I also really look for and make sure that we are tracking how the book is translating to the um, overall goal. And for this call here, everybody's very platform-based um, in terms of using the book to be a business card for their business platform. It's really just a way to walk your business on a bigger level, and that's, that should be it. Um, you know, I think you've heard, we've talked the whole Christy Whitman thing out. Um, I will just, uh, you saw some of her appearances last week. Um, we're working with her on her next book, a quantum success book, business book, a business strategy book um, at this time. And because she's been with us over a long period of time, she, she's done celebrity gift bags like you have to, you're doing, Robert. So as a result of this, and what you're going to benefit from your gift bag, Robert, is that they're going to give you a list that we will also keep on file as well of all the celebrities and talent managers that receive your book. And we, we keep that. So when, for Christy, we've been able to reach out through the, through the proper channels for those celebrities at different points in times to um, ask for those uh, forwards or book blurbs or other types of endorsements. So we nurture the celebrity list that we create through these avenues over a period of time so that when we're developing the other properties, we can add to it. So that's how we really work as a company on a long-range basis to really leverage um, the time and the resources and the assets that go into it. I was teasing um, Dr. De Silva this morning because I, I assumed she was in it with a patient. She had come to the on-camera training this past December, which was very specific and very strategic when we had Janet Hill from KTLA as the uh, on-camera training expert, and everybody on this call has been to the on-camera training. But you know that I always, I always will nudge you, like, oh, wink, wink, you need to go to this one because this producer is going to be very specific to uh, your platform. So here we are, thank goodness, six months later since uh, Dr. Silva went. She's, we've dragged Guyani to, I think she's been to like six or seven trainings. God love her for her <laughs> participation, but anyway, we knew that she needed to get to um, in front of Janet Hill of KTLA so that when the book came out, Janet would call her. So today at 10.45 a.m., Janet picks up the phone. She's like, yeah, I'm leaving in 45 minutes. I'd like to have my script turned in. Can you get Dr. Silva at Monday at 10.45? And I, of course, know that I assume it's a work day, so Guyani, Dr. Silva is in with patients, so she's you know going hour to hour clocking, and I need to answer within 45, 40 minutes from her. So I, I felt that I could probably accept it, but I, it's like it's it's one of those moments where you know she's invested time, money, energy, and opportunity into this, and I'm like hoping that she's not on vacation on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, the Fourth of July. Anyway, it worked out, and I'm just saying that. This is how we're leveraging opportunity and not everybody sticks around to even see the fruits of their own labor. And I think that's the sad part about it. But if you do, we're able to you know, build these lists, build these um, infrastructures that work. Um, and that's what a lot of this is about. So, and, and Jackie, can I yeah, jump in real please. quick? Just uh, first of all, I, that on-camera training was great for me, that those sessions. Thank you. And, um, yeah, that was very helpful. And, and also, you mentioned Guyani, you know, uh, and Next Avenue, we have that segment. That's, that's right. Since that's they, right. Since, since they know us, and I know at one point, Richard, uh, you know. Uh, I didn't think it's something about. Yeah, we could embed that in the article. I'm going to make a note. I'm just going to reach over to yeah. you. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, um, since, since, they, since they know both. Of us. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm just thinking, and I just text myself that one. Yeah, that was because you did a grandparent segment with her. We did. Okay, thank you for anyway, that. Anyway, not to interrupt the flow here, but I okay. wanted to mention it before I forgot. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And then, and thank you for also just jumping on the whole leveraging. This is how we leverage. This is the whole idea of the leveraging of the ideas. Uh, this is Gaspar, uh, Dr. Phil Dembo. Um, the reason I'm bringing his up real quickly here is 
um, upon shooting, we did shoot for him a demo reel, published his book, you know, small, short list of appearances, Spirit Magazine, um, Southwest Airlines Magazine, uh, Baby and Toddler. He got a development deal on ABC for, for daytime show, uh, went up against the developing show, which was The Chew. Um, but he was so successful with building out his practice as a result of his platform that he moved his family from St. Louis, Missouri, closed down a 30-year psychology practice, moved to Brentwood as a result of our work with him while under contract with him, and started a life coach practice and now lives in and works in Brentwood. So it's all for me about platform building and translating it to, to your business and to, you know, creating a lifestyle and hopefully like you'll work through us uh, at any level that you participate opens up opportunities that you otherwise wouldn't have and that's um, what this is all about on a bigger level. Um, here we just talk about our basic services um, for, um, for publishing and I think I said last week um, Darren Campo leveraged his, he's a, he's a television producer who I've known for a long time, but because of the nature of our TV industry and that we know that we, we go a lot of time from show to not on a show, which is called unemployment, to show again, we used his platform of writing um, a fiction series to leverage him into an NYU professorship that he's always been able to maintain no matter what network he's been able to work for. So that's that what's going on in that picture there. Um, so that's, uh, I, mean, I guess we're going through some of our, what we do or how, how we put it together um, for our guests for the different pieces that you can benefit for and from. Um, bringing just Robert into the conversation, I think what Robert, one of the questions that he had for us about doing this gift bag um, was the idea of, you know, I'm going to come out with a revised book in November, is doing the, the Teen Choice Awards now relevant? And um, it was my estimation that absolutely yes, because one, he's going to get the press for it. Two, we've pretty much determined that even if we change the cover or tweak the cover a little bit, it's not going to make that much difference. And the people who are receiving it is his target audience. If Robert was you're going to be so busy, he didn't need to want to do this anymore. It would be because, right, Robert, you have a whole Teen Choice Awards would be your whole entire client base, right, roster. So um, sure. I found that to be the best way, best way for it. So, And then, of course, for us, the bookings are supposed to leverage the appearances. Um, and then as most of you know, and I'm just, it, it turns out that I'm speaking to the choir today on this, but we will position you on local appearances and then if the tape is good, the segment is good, we'll pitch them on the national level if we haven't shot a demo reel. If we shot a demo reel, we can go right to the national level with the pitches and the bookings and stuff like that. But these are all different shows that all of our published authors have um, ended up on. And uh, so that's where we're at with that. Um, this is bringing it back to uh, encouraging around Richard. Um, according to Hunter College, the following is a brief description of five qualities of good writing. Focus, development, unity, coherence, and correctness. Um, flow, connectedness, passion, know your audience, and commitment to what you are sharing is, I think, our TV guestbook version of it, of what the writing process should be like, is uh, flow, connectedness, passion, know your audience, and commitment to what you are sharing. Um, also, uh, it's really also important in the books that we work with that the author has and can maintain their voice. I used two like supplemental ghostwriters in um, for Get on TV and for Heartfelt Marketing. Um, and when I did my second book, Heartfelt Marketing, I can every time I read through where the other ghostwriter wrote certain parts for me because they were more research oriented, I just cringe because I can feel that I just gave up my voice in the book and didn't hold my own quality of it. Um, this is Gaspar Eve Michaels doing uh, one of our, we do audio books. And so, uh, and that's a nice incentive when we get to do audio books for our clients because audible.com, if you can encourage a first time audible uh, person to sign up with them, they literally will pay, the, pay $50 audible 
for that first sign up of your thing that happens to be your book. So if they buy um, Robert Park Bundy's Safe Stardom as their book, first book, Robert Park Bundy's um, account will receive the $50 bonus for it. So it's been a real, actually something that we've been really worked with our authors on for those as a really nice perk, especially with their database and, and people do listen to audiobooks. But the point here that I was trying to make really was about making sure that the voice was consistent within your book. And sometimes people's voice fades in and fades out. And that makes it a very difficult uh, to read. The other uh, idea here was the uh, idea of keeping a consistent narrative throughout the book. And that's something else that when we read books, they drop in and drop out. Um, I am in the process of reading for a potential um, author client a fiction book uh, about a, a murder. And the way the gentleman has kind of like a, it's basically a Jack Reacher kind of story and it, it has the potential to be really good. But it's, it's right now it's just one thread of a, of a one thread of a story. The narrative is just one thread. And we're so accustomed, I think, in the fiction world of being entertained thoroughly that we're used to multiple threads happening at, um, at, a, at a moment in time in terms of our entertainment. And so I look at that on a fictional level, and I also look at it on a nonfiction level, too, especially as a TV producer. You know, whenever we wrote a script, you, we would always, at the front of the you know, front of a script, you tease the entire show. So for me, I like to tease the best part of the book up first, then back into the book. And then every chapter for me should have a tease out and a tease in. So I really structure books like a 12-segment uh, script, nonfiction books, and what are the tease in, what are the tease out, and what's the body in between. So I'm very, I don't say it's a formula, but there is a structure or rhythm that I look for in the narrative when we're reading books just to make sure it stays um, interesting because I, I you know we, we're also inundated with information right now it's really hard to um, hold our anyone's attention so I think these elements uh, are, are important and I also feel that you know I guess we're, we're four weeks into our, our time together and these are things that as we were a little bit deeper into you know our considering where our books are headed, become a little bit more important in terms of writing a, a, a better book. Uh, Non-judgmental writing, I think it's really important too, because what happens at this particular point is that you have enough information in your head to want to shut down the writing process. And so it's been my experience that now you've got enough information, you have enough knowledge about the whole process, and this is where it gets dense, uh, tacky, sticky, boring, um, distractive, and the writing just doesn't flow, and you don't. There's not a lot of incentive to write. So I'm just kind of calling it out as an exorcism here, so that we stay in the, in the process of the non-judgmental writing and stay committed to the process. And and if we can stay committed to the process of doing the writing. We'll get it done. We'll get over the hump. This hump doesn't last, but it, this hump always comes up um, in, in my experience. And then having done these um, webinars in cycles, I just the whole group usually has a meltdown between our week three to five is, is, the, is the sticky point. It seems like we, have, we break something open between week two and three, but around week four, it's like it kind of just falls apart. So... Um, I'm just calling it out so that we just stay in the process of it. If you're if you're in the writing process, don't edit, just write. And if you're in the uh, editing process, um, we always say lower your standards. We have this other expression, not that we practice it completely, but I love this expression of mediocrity makes money, which really means like get out of perfectionism. And I think the same thing with writing. Lower your standards. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, we're not doing War and Peace, uh, if we, uh, because we read New York Times bestseller books, so many of them are formulas anyway, and you know they aren't actually the best books out there. So just keep your standards realistic in order to keep the process going. Uh, I love this um, in terms of you're in the editing process. Um, we like uh, two apps that we 
pull up sometimes to assist in, in the writing of it. Um, Grammarly, which is, uh, can be used our Chrome or MS Office users, which will pick up any grammar mistakes if you're going through it. And then there's Hemingway Editor, um, so that, you know, it just helps with any writing process. I mean, obviously, we all have auto spell check and stuff like that, but some of these grammar uh, programs help, well, you know, in the editing process of it. And I was also told as a writing trick, take what you like, leave the rest, right? That if you are writing and you stop in an incomplete sentence, you will come back and complete the sentence and then move forward. So it kind of leaves you, leaves you in your own hook. I couldn't do that, but apparently that's been a successful tool for everybody else. I'm somebody who has to wash the dishes before I go to bed, so I could never leave a, a sentence incomplete um, as well. The other thing that I wanted to share is that um, because I look at a book as a business project or a, um, an entire, you know, to me we're putting a product into a national marketplace. So I treat the product, even though it's led by the author, it's led by, you know, the writer, that who is your writing team? And in your writing team, um, the process here is about having, you know, a, a good, you know, a writer who's going to be your editor, uh, who is your copy editor, you know, who's your marketing person. Uh, you know, for us, you know, who is our, you know, we've got a sales team. We also have a distribution a marketing team that we have to work with. So we are working with a variety of participants in the whole book project. So you should know who that is and you can also know what their strengths and weaknesses are. All too often when we get into the writing team, we'll have an author who will um, get feedback from their mother, brother, sister, father, neighbor, brother-in-law. Um, and even though it's you know, a, a writing team should be balanced with perspective in terms of the book, and I've already shared with you, and we'll go into it again, like, you know, how we've run into title challenges with dealing with our uh, national sales team, because, you know, different parts of this country intuit things on a different level, so, but have a writing team, uh, a writing team together, even if you just have a writing buddy, or an action buddy that you're checking in with your work through progress in your writing. I can't tell you how many people call me in July, we, you know, of a year, and they will, you know, want to do a book, a book with us, or a book on their own. They don't want to do any of our services that we offer, which is totally fine. And then we'll check in with them in, a, you know, six months to a year, and they've never written anything. So uh, you don't need a company necessarily like us to do it, but you certainly do need an, a, t a team. Who is your team to help you? Um, get the book done, and if you're getting, you know, stuck, maybe, you know, consider changing out maybe who the players are or whatever to keep it moving. But we use so many people on our, for our, for one book, we go, so many people have touched that book. Um, I mean, I think with Dr. De Silva's book, you know, she essentially did, it's her content for sure. Um, she participated in the writing, she did contracts for ghostwriting services. Uh, which moved it along for her in terms of the structure and the schedule. But before she was done with the book, I'm t possibly 14 people, 14, 15 people have been through her book in one form or another uh, to get that together. So I bring that up so that you know that it, this isn't a singularity process. But the one part that you we, uh, we can control, we can do, is the creative inspiration part, which is the writing. So staying committed to the writing, um, you know, again, 10 minutes a day isn't a whole lot. It's only a little, probably a little less than 90 minutes a week um, that we can do. Uh, we've got one more week going in. We're going to be available to you for the next six months on your writing projects after the end of this webinar series to review your manuscript. Um, I'll review it, and so will one of our members of our team, and you can share notes and feedback on that as well. But to stay in the process of having it committed because, you know, if we can, as a company, can get a um, book on a bookstore bookshelf within one year of writing it, you know, I teaching um, my clients and my friends and my colleagues how to do it as well. So it's not something that is um, not possible and, and can't be done. 
The other thing is, is we talk about um, is the sharing of it. And, you know, sharing either that the fact that you're doing it, the fact that you're committed to doing it, or even pieces of it to kind of get a temperature or some feedback with it. You know, it's funny because, Pat, you said that you, uh, I, I don't know if I was part of that conversation with a literary person that don't get too clever. But I, th I thought to myself, but I don't know, but clever sticks sometimes, you know. So I, I think clever is, uh, could be possibly okay if it's right clever, maybe not. Yeah, but well, she, she definitely, it's funny, at the time, <clears throat> um, what was the one that uh, was so successful she kept referring to? You're a badass was the one. Oh, got it. So, you know, so she was, you know, she was kind of, uh, just saying, you know, uh, make it short. <laughs> you yeah. Know, make it, make it, uh, like you've been saying, pretty much. You know, a, a, a grabber that yeah. Uh, yeah. doesn't doesn't take too much explanation. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And we've been looking for um, if I can nail down three words in a in a title. Um, that's ultimately what I try to do. We're, we're sometimes as a company, we're just we're not. We still don't get that, but I really, really do work to try and get three words down as a title. Yeah. We can. Yep. Um, so okay, so that's where I'm trying to pivot and arc for today. Um, and our next week, we're going to really wrap up on marketing. Uh, but between this week and next week, I'm really hoping that we just you know, can stay with the process, stay with the, with the writing. Um, Pat, with, with work from this week to next week on the titles. I think that we yep. should just play wordsmith with the titles. Um, Robert, you're honestly, you're moving, you know, you're moving from edits and you're taking action steps to position your November re-release with really great marketing efforts. So, you know, which are, which is extraordinary. Um, Stacy is definitely putting together here the elements um, that it, we, we've been talking about in the last four or five weeks, so that she's very clear on what her book is. And I think Richard, um, you, as you stay committed to the writing, you certainly know what good stories that you have that um, uh, are going to make the good book. I, I have get the sense that you know exactly what you what you need to um, do to complete the book. Any thoughts or questions here? Well, I just want to say I have no excuse. I mean, I've just been busy, but I mean, I've written scripts and I know what it's like to finish something, so. Of course, of course. Well, not calling you out by any means, but I just um, I spent, we just finished this a couple weeks ago, and it just this was this was the hump week. This is yep. the hump week. So um, yeah. So and even 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 in our writing here, because we've actually been pacing our writing project here as a team while we've been doing this course. This was the week that we also were like, oh, so clunky. <laughs> so yeah, that would be that. Anything else, or do, are we all, are you okay with we wrap early then for the Fourth of July weekend? What what can it, can I ask yeah. Jackie? What of the of the books you have up there is, is Christie's been the most successful? Uh, Christie's is yeah I guess Christie's has been well but you know the Christie's got the title the New York Times best selling book but right. um, but this spontaneous transformation is, in one year has sold we've sold fourteen thousand copies of that. Wow, that's so we've actually in a uh, we've outsold the Christie Whitman one, but we were able to campaign the Christie Whitman one. In the weirdest way, I would say spontaneous transformation would have been, it was it kind of was a botch campaign, but it wasn't a botched um, sales job because um, yeah. we we've, we've actually she's hers is um, sold the most. Real purpose of parenting, which is a parent is a parenting book, is our most consistent seller of books. Um, and then truthfully, right. our fiction books, those are fiction books. I, I wouldn't say we're, like, that would be our strong suit. Fic selling fiction books is not our strong suit. But um, it has served yeah. our author's platform. So if, from that regard, I feel, I feel really good about that. 
Right. I have one question, I, if you don't mind, since we have a little time. Uh, your time. Okay. Um, my book focuses primarily on California. Hear a ringing. Oh, I'm sorry. That was my phone. I just turned it off. Okay, great. Um, so I have my book focuses primarily, and, and to a large extent, on California, because I'm a California lawyer and I was a talent agent in California, and most of the business is here. But I wondered if, as part of my update or you know enhancement of the book, I should sprinkle more New York stuff in there, try to make it a little more bi-coastal. Um, I certainly know people in New York. I could get some advice, but I could research it myself also. And I just don't know if this is a necessary, a great idea, a bad idea. Do you want my instinct? Yeah. Not necessary at all. Um, to qualify that is uh, a couple of things. Because uh, California is just the mecca of pilot season, that sure. even, even the successful, young, advertising, commercial children in New York, they all are, are all out here for, yeah, the, yeah and you're, you're going to be the go-to California person. So I, I ultimately think it's unnecessary. And then to second that, um, one of our longtime guests works as a child talent manager. And she, we, child talent manager. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. Tell me who it is. Can you disclose or not? Oh yeah, Susie Mains. Is it Susie Mains has been with us. Oh, sure. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, we receive phone calls all the time. You can imagine every parent in the country is trying to track her down because you know they've got the most beautiful, talented child out there, and um, so they often you know, through Google searches or whatever, associate her with, with us, and we'll call here looking for them. Those families that call here all the time randomly trying to get her to her are, they all want to come to California for their, their kids. And you you just need to be, you just need to hold the position of being to go to a California attorney, entertainment attorney. So that's well, I handle the big, you know, I Dora the Explorer. Her name is uh, her real name is Saint, uh, Caitlin Sanchez. She's the voice of Dora. He was for a long while, and I handled her case against Nickelodeon. Uh, and she's from New York, but she found me on her own because the New York lawyers she had weren't getting anywhere for her. So she did track me down, and she's New York. So uh, I'm good with not doing the New York thing. It's a lot more work, and I don't know if it's going to benefit. So I'm glad for your instinct. Yeah, I, I don't think, especially not in the child arena. You know, I think if it would be different if you're, you know, when you're your adult um, book, but I don't think for children, this is all where it's happening. Yeah, and there's a couple of little references to some distinctions about New York when something is really different. I, I, I mention it in the current book, so I just don't dwell on it. But okay, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think you totally are good. And um, just to reflect back to you. Uh, Robert, that your book is um, really smart, but it's not too smart, and I really appreciated that. Like, uh, it was it was a read that I had no problem staying with and tracking, and I don't find a lot of legal books yeah. like that. That you just want you just your head want you know if you're if you're a civilian, you don't want to read a law a law school book. No, I wrote it to the parents. I definitely yeah, made. Yeah. My audience is the parents, not the not a bunch of lawyers. Exactly. So you did a really good job with that. Well, thanks. Okay. <clears throat> that was my yeah. only and, You know, it, since we're on kind of expanding audience, Jackie, I mean, just in terms of my target audience of, of uh, 50 plus that want to get into something more creative, I mean, do you see, you know, any other specifics that should be addressed just in terms of my target audience? Or? I don't know if this needs to be in your right. book. Uh, that's a great question, Pat. And I don't think this needs to be in your book, but it might be something that we can work on in your media platform 
um, and it's just kind of really coming in in clarity and in a lot of different directions for us here in the TV Guestwork room um, is this whole millennial piece. It's uh, especially as it relates to the workforce, especially as it relates to um, how they do business versus how we've been doing business. Uh, right. So I think um, we should really look at developing out, because I think we've spent a lot of content, time doing content just geared towards the um, baby boomers, which is which is your platform, but I think uh, where we can I'm pretty I'm pretty sick of baby boomers. To be <laughs> well, I think I think I think um, news Get over wise, yourself. Yeah, I think well, I think news hook wise, it's really like it's this whole idea of understanding the millennial, um, yeah. understanding the millennial, and I think they're I, well, your 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 daughters. Well, your daughter's a little bit older than millennials, right? Yeah, your youngest. Twenty four, thirty five. Oh no, she's right. She is a. She's not. She's a, yeah. She's, yeah. We got oldest and younger than millennials. Um, My daughter. You too, Robert. With son and daughter, both are millennials. Oh, okay, yeah. So, but uh, this is what the studies say. Uh, I don't know if this is true for either of you gentlemen, but you know, I hear they're living at home longer. They're saving their money. <laughs> you know, they're not. They're they're not. They're gone. Mine are gone. <laughs> Go I mean, they're out. They're out of the house. <laughs> oh, okay. They're out of the house. Yeah, they just what they're reading and what the studies seem to say and just the, our experience over here in Silicon Valley is that there's just a little bit of a different attitude about um, values, priorities, and the way the work they work. Oh, definitely. So, oh, it's huge. Yeah, it's and a discrepancy. Of, yeah, and one of the things, you know, it's funny you say that because uh, TV News Check, which is one of the TV trades, has asked me to interview a couple of uh, guys that run TV stations to talk about retaining, you know, uh, uh, getting and retaining millennials. And it's interesting because that, that could be a little bit of an angle on this. Oh, good. Of, yeah, that's, that's an interesting comment because I think, I, think, I think basically the purpose of my book is to have a happy life. Right. Which applies to any age. Of course. You know. Of course. Yeah, of course. So, well, yeah, maybe the, maybe there should be. Let me think. Of, I'll think about how that might apply without diluting everything. And Yeah, I don't actually see it. Um, I don't see this content even being in this book. Um, but I do see right. it, even if, yeah, however, even if you promote the book, I still see it as a, like a backdoor entry in. To what you do, yeah. I mean, it could even be like, you know, what if baby boomers can learn from the millennial workforce? Right. You know, something like that as a news hook or a news pitch. Because I just think that there's a lot of, um, you know, I think they're, they're there's, you know, that they're they're the re they're either inheriting the housing market or they're not. They don't want to buy into it. So they don't inherit it. They don't want to buy into it. And um, there's almost so there's a kink in the matrix, at least in the real estate world for what is going on in the millennial market. So yeah. I think there's a lot to explore um, content-wise for you on that, and especially yeah. because you are the father of the millennials. So, there we go. Yeah. And what are, and what are we going to do when they get a law passed that has us all killed at age 70? I mean, you know, how are we going to face that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think no. anything is possible these days. Yeah, I think so. Anything is possible. But, that's good. Good. In, good input. Thanks. Oh, good. I'm glad that helps. Anything for you, Richard? No, not at the moment. Okay. It's just good stuff today. All right, thank you. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody's input. I appreciate everybody's time, and I really like uh, really. I uh, feel like we're making, I feel like everything's kind of germinating for everybody. Um, so have a really great holiday weekend. And don't keep that from doing the writing or the brainstorming or what you need to get um, the project moving right, forward. Thinking. Maybe we can do more. Let me ask a personal thing. Do you, do you need two copies of my book? Is that what I understood from Stephanie? Yes, yes. You want me to send just give you two copies right now before I order the hundred or whatever? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Got that it. That would be great. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Just
clean, unsigned, this and that, just clean. Yep. Right? Yeah, okay. yeah, that that would be fine. I mean, if you happen to have, if your only stock is signed stock, that's not a problem. But yeah, to get, we can get two book two uh, books over. We need to get them over right away for some, you know, for some reason. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah, I, that those will go right out. Okay, that's I hope fine. I have. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if not, I'm sure we can get it from you know. I think I have two of those soft covers around. I might have two hardcovers. You don't want the hardcover. So. I don't think so. I, I don't think that's necessary. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, Stacy. Have Stacey. a safe and you have a great too. week. Thank you, everybody. Happy Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.